Oh, what it do, guys, and welcome back to another video. Now, we're going to be looking at Nova and getting straight into her rework, covering everything you need to know, all of the quality of life, all of the changes. But overall, spoiler alert, oh my God, she is so, so much better right now. Like, I think she's moved up quite a fair bit in everybody's playbook. Let's go ahead and pick her as one of your favorite frames. She's really good. So, let's, without further ado, let's go ahead and just jump straight into the abilities and talk about what's going on here. Now, to start off with, her knockdown her old passive um i think if like your shields got depleted you would knock down enemies that were next to you i'm not gonna lie to you it didn't really do an awful lot uh furthermore if someone gave you overguards you couldn't really ever proc your passive so <laughs> it was a little bit counterintuitive however they've fully scrapped her old passive so what they've done now is that whether the enemies are sped up or slowed down you'll either get a health orb or an energy orb when they die and um, this is really really good because most of the time and pretty much all of the time you're going to be playing around her uh, fourth ability molecular prime so this kind of makes sense um, and it's also really good for her economy uh, and equilibrium alone is just going to help your energy economy so much better so way better passive big fan of it um, and i believe it also just applies to the team as well it's just it's just overall health helping everybody so great fantastic uh now her first ability here's my notes on this one so null star first of all it's now recastable second of all they increase the antimatter particles from six to 12 so it's an increase of 100 percent now if you do want to go and get the 90 percent damage reduction the cap you still need 18 but again going from six to 18 in comparison to 12 to 18 is obviously a very very big jump so 12 to 18 is way nicer for us and um, that alone was already just a huge change now the damage reduction used to only work on your health so if your shields depleted again that was kind of like the whole passive synergy it didn't really matter but um what's going to happen now is that you now get the 90 percent also to your shields which again just makes her survival so much better so she's surviving really really well right now <clears throat> Then they went ahead and changed her slash damage uh so the damage on the orb is going to be slash they've now changed it to blast and originally you might think oh you know uh, that doesn't seem that good no it's actually really really good i won't lie to you now what they also did for her augment over here was if you do go ahead and apply this and when you do apply it all of your null stars will now get heat damage and heat proc and oh my goodness let me just show you real quickly what that really looks like so I've been messing about with her just before the video. <laughs> so if I go ahead and press one here, you can see what that's like. You can see how they seek out. Then if I recast one, I go ahead and get more. But then the ones that I've got on me go out. And I can just... Now, if I keep spamming it, you can see there's a little bit of a cooldown in between each cast. I know some players are really not a fan of this, but I would still rather take it now in the position that it's in now than have that little bit of quality of life on recast. Don't get me wrong. If we could spam even more, I mean, look at that, 64 heat procs. If we could go ahead and spam a little bit more, a little bit more often, this this ability would be absolutely insane. So it might go ahead and hurt a, a builds like um, the Titania Subsumable with the Null Star as like the Titania Thermal Sunday, which is like for relics where you go and kill low levels. It might go and hurt that, but I haven't really messed about with that build yet, so I don't know. But anyways, regardless, this ability is looking so much better. Now, the Helmin version of this ability does not give you 90% damage reduction. No, it gives you 75%. So it's similar to Mirage's damage reduction as well on her Eclipse that you can go and subsume to others and go ahead and get the 75% damage reduction, okay? But yes, way better. Big thumbs up from me. Let's move on to the next one, which is antimatter drop. Now, my notes here. First of all, quality of life. It is easier to control, way easier, and it is visually better. And I cannot... I, if, that, if they had stopped there that would have been amazing or alone okay but from here onwards you when it is charged you can recast it to speed it up and just kind of shoot it out which is also amazing they've changed the damage from radiation to blast and now it is based upon line of sight and i'll talk about multi-shot in a moment okay so let's go ahead and just show you what i mean by like how it looks visually better and so forth that's what it looks like now right you can see it's a lot slower i can still control it if i'm going to shoot it a couple of times now if i start moving behind it and just like keep it above me like this see what i mean so if i just kind of bring it back around here that's very easy for me to go and do now that it's charged if i just aim at them and press two i can shoot it towards them like so so this is really 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 good i'm a big fan of that now the way that it does go ahead and work for those who don't know is um in order to go and charge it up it requires five shots 
if you don't have multi-shot. If you do have multi-shot, you can charge the orb up quicker, okay? In terms of the orb damage, from what I've tested so far, the only thing that increases the orb's damage is strength and straight flat, like just overall damage on mods and so forth. So for example, um, I tried to use, I'm gonna show you here cause I had all of this set up real quick. Uh, I used the Exegus, but I wanna go and show you, this is what I was using just real quick. Um, only this, this and this flat are the only things that will increase the damage. This increases how quick I can charge the orb, but it does not increase the orb damage. These do not increase the orb damage. Status damage doesn't increase it either, nor the status proc. And this is just quality of life because I'm using the Exegus right now. Now, I do believe that the damage from this does also carry over as well. And I believe potentially even Void Strike also carries over. But it, as you see, it's just raw damage that you need to add into something to then go ahead and get a build out of it. Does that make sense? hopefully it does uh, but do your own testing as well because there might be one or two things that maybe we need to turn the leaf over and maybe i just didn't double check but i checked as far as i could and that's what i've currently got whether or not that's subject to change i don't know so it's in a much much better spot um good stuff right next we have got wormhole now wormhole um, and we're actually going to read this one out because I'm going to show you something. I'm currently bugged and I might have to re leave the relay. That's why. Uh, anyways, it says now, um, hold the ability to visualize placement. Um, it's not working for me, but it does work. It does work. Okay. Um, it's not working for me. So what happened to Wormhole and what happened here was it no longer scales of duration. So they won't just be portals that sit there uh, and then time out. What's going to happen now is that the portals basically remain there indefinitely unless you use up all of the charges or you replace the portals by putting down another portal. So you can still go and get four portals. So let's go ahead and show you what that looks like as well. So here we go. One, two, three, four. But then as soon as I put down a fifth portal, it get res gets rid of the first portal. Does that make sense? You can only have four portals down. Now, I am actually going to be holding the ability down. And you see, I can't visualize it, but mine's bugged. If you hold it down, it won't cast the portal straight away. Okay. Um, it will it will be like Calervo's teleport, if you know his raffle uh, advanced kind of ability. So it's, if you hold it down, you can go and visually see where you will end up. So uh, that's the same with the portal. You'll visually see, see when I tap it, you see how like it showed that just before. You see that there? It might be a little bit hard to see, don't worry. But anyways, mine's currently bugged right now. Just ignore what I've got. But yes, if you hold it down, you can visually see where to place it, okay? Which is actually really, really good if you want to go and set things up in a very specific way. Now, the other thing that it does go and have here as well is it's now got charges upon the top. So though it doesn't scale off duration, it does scale off charges. So if I enter it and then come back over again, you can see three out of four, because that one's now shrunk. That also goes for this if i shoot that up and charge it and then send it through it also uses another and even if i don't charge it and i just send it through there you go it still uses another one there now do go and keep in mind as well is that when it does come towards these um if you send it in it will charge itself i don't even see it there you'd have to slow that down or maybe like lean towards the screen because i'm not doing that again but um if you go ahead and see it there it actually half charges the orb so if you're going to go and send the orb through it will half charge it which means you kind of want to half charge it your first before you send it through or just fully charge it it's entirely up to you okay um but yeah that's basically about how the portals work there's just quality of life for the most point uh, nothing really changed with the augment i don't believe i think the augment's still the same uh the anti-matter augment I, I believe as well is also still the same uh the escape velocity is also just still the same which is again very good for like speed running and getting around lovely jubbly now we got one last thing to go and talk about which is molecular prime here's my notes first of all it's now got a tap hold function Okay, I want to go and show you guys something about that because I want to go and show you what you can go and do. So basically, instead of you having to build in the past, we had to go ahead and have two separate configs, right? We'd have one config here that was like speed var, and then we would lower our strength, and then we'd have another config here which was then slow var, so slow nova, speed nova, right? So slow, speed, and then slow required a little bit more strength. Speed var required less strength. So that also meant if you wanted to go and put like ability shards and so forth on her, um, ability strength shards uh we kind of hurt in the speed of the builds which is like oh is that? that sucks right so basically what they've done is they've just said no sod it you can now choose what you want to do in a mission if you tap it 
it'll be this. If you hold it, it'll be that. Now you might be thinking, why am I not saying the right one? Let me show you why, because I've changed it and I can't remember what's what. I think if you hold it, you speed. Watch what I do. So if I go to options and I go to, I believe it is this one here. So it's on, for me, it's keyboard and mouse. Okay. I, I don't know if it's, yeah, I think it's also there on controller as well. So keyboard and mouse, I click on this and you can, you can invert hold tap abilities. So now you go through them and you can choose whichever warframes you want. And you got to really think about what abilities does what, but this one here, Nova, I've inverted it. So I believe by default, if you hold the ability down, it should speed enemies up. However, mine does not now. Because you see, most of the time that I'm playing her, if I'm looking to do anything with her, I would rather tap to speed, hold to slow. So I've just basically inverted the controls, okay? But otherwise, I believe it's the other way around. So it's for you guys right now, if you don't touch it, it's tap to slow, hold to speed. This is the best part about this. There's no right way to go and set this up. Play it how you want to go and play it, okay? It's just a really good quality of life that you, you do have an option for. Now for the rest of my notes, it's now capped at 75% regardless. Whether you wanna slow them down or you wanna speed them up, it's 75% all across the boards, okay? So uh, just keep that in mind. I think that's like 150% strength is all you need. So you get 150% strength and you can slow and speed and you're good, you're capped out. Uh, they increased the base though, it used to be 30%. So enemy slow or speed, it used to be 30 uh, and then you would, get it up to 75 well now it's it's 50 so they've actually just bumped that up by an extra 15 percent that was really nice um the way that the damage now works you get like a multiplier uh, onto enemies this multiplier basically now goes it used to i think it used to again only go on health i'm not 100 sure but it now goes on health shields and overguards as in like that multiplier is now multiplying finally it's working in the way where just because they've got like an extra resistance it didn't work so the only thing that would really go ahead and work on was basically like you would need armor strip or something else like that to go and get more out of it yeah that's not the case here you can now go and get that multiplier there and as you see it's got 200 damage vulnerability it's so so much nicer uh and then what we also got here is um even if they have overguards so this is something that i'd like i like announcing this one even if they have overguard you can still speed them up whilst they have overguards it bypasses overguards this is really good for those missions where we were speeding enemies like for anybody who doesn't know when to use this like a defense mission some defense missions we just want to go in get the waves done and get out and we want to try and get enemy path into us quicker so we were like we're waiting we're waiting we're waiting speed nova this is where she comes in now all right so you basically go and press for all of the enemies would run to you a bit quicker however eximus wouldn't now eximus will which is absolutely fantastic uh, i can try to show you uh, here real quickly if i go ahead and go ahead and take a corrupted bunch of eximus i'm gonna make myself vulnerable so they don't go ahead and hurt me and then uh, <laughs> and then we'll go ahead and unpause them so as you can see that's them right now now if i press if i just tap it for me you see how they're much quicker i try and maybe move or something hopefully we can oh yeah you saw how they just sprinted around the corner there yeah so you can see how they're moving way quicker on that so yes it, it now speeds them up which is also really really nice uh there you go. I'm like, uh, oh, uh, also, if they die when they're primed, so if you if you use molecular prime or if you use the molecular fission, which we'll get to in a moment, if the enemy is considered primed by a molecular prime, on death, there's a 20% chance that they'll just go and have like a blast kind of proc on death, basically, um, which is really good for, again, just kind of clearing out rooms. It used to just be explosion on death, I think it was, but now I think it's now like a blast proc on death. So this thing here, molecular fission as well, um, enemies hit by null stars are now primed as well. Um, and um, when killed, primed enemies will also restore a null charge, but have to restart uh, with a have, have a percentage chance of restoring two. Now that if you look at that and you're like me, because I just read what I read and it it doesn't add up, I'd be like, why not just say it guarantees you two charges back? Because if you really read it, you'll be like, that's two charges. Why why, why the long win? Because this mod scales. Yeah, if you've scaled the mods, that percentage, if you unscaled the mod, that percentage would be lower. So it's not 100% at that point. So that's, <laughs> when I look at it, I'm like, hmm, the moment it reaches 100%, that's so long-winded to say it'll give you two null stars back. Just, you know, <laughs> but anyways, that's basically what that is. So 
that's basically Nova in like a nutshell on what's going on here and how she's looking. So um, hopefully that helped clear it up. She is in a much, much better spot. So let's go ahead and stop yapping. I'm sure you guys want some builds, right? Yes, sir. All right, let's go and get you guys into some builds. We're going to start off with probably the more entertaining build that I think a lot of people are definitely going to want. And this is the one that I also encourage as well. We're going to start off with a null star build. Now, let me go ahead and close that, bring it back up so you can see all the stats there go. So this build here is super, super fun. Um, oh my goodness, let's break some things down. So this build is going to be centered around Nullstar as a whole. Not only is this your damage, this is also your survival. Because keep in mind, it gives you damage reduction. Okay, now the particles, I think my camera's a little bit in the way here. Hopefully you guys can go and see this without my fat head in the way. So you can see antimatter particles, I got 21. So I have over the 18 to go and get the 90% damage reduction. Uh, damage reduction per particle now scales off strength as well. It used to scale off duration, it doesn't so keep that in mind um the the antimatter particles itself scales off duration okay so if you see here right at the top it says 20 you see it says 12 21 if i remove that off you see it says 12 18 okay so keep that in mind the amount of particles you get scales off duration the particle resistance so you see where it's underneath it, it says five to eight percent if i now take that off you can now see it says five to three percent okay that scales off strength so they're a little bit split in the past it used to just be duration for both i believe that's not the same anymore so not only is it really good offensively it's uh, defensively it's really good offensively we're going to put the neutron star augment in here because there's no reason for us to not put it in there uh since it's doing he we're going to take archon vitality and since we go archon vitality and we know that he uh we are uh, we can go and get heat to double dip you could go ahead and do a rhino's roar for faction now if you do do that it's fine uh, let me explain the difference between Nourish and Rhino's Roar here. Rhino's Roar would actually add more if you're doing a loadout Nova. So if you're running a Primer Companion like Dyriga or Hounds or something like that, um, yeah, you could Rhino's Roar and then you can get even more damage per Null Star because they're doing the priming for you, right? That being said though, you are relying on your companion to do basically all of that priming. The quality of life of just taking a Nourish is far, far better. Take a Nourish, take a Null Star, you should be good just like that. Uh, although again, it can synergize with companions. So from there on, that's good. Now what we're gonna go and do is we also want a little bit of extra survival. Every time I'm casting as well, I can also get Brief Respite, so I'm getting shields back. Now, don't get me wrong, for brave respite inside this build i do actually want to use nourish because i get more energy back so i get more shields back see that costs 77 whereas that only costs 38 so the idea is if i need to go ahead and shield gate and i'm looking to go and get shields back a little bit quicker i will just respam nourish again another reason why nourish is a little bit better than raw here because you can just recast nourish you can't just recast raw unless you put another augment in the build as you can see don't really have many spots for another augment right now um so keep that in mind now flow just overall capacity uh, continuity because we're, we are trying to go and increase our uh, we want to go and get 18 antimatter particles somehow some way uh rage because again we're looking for damage that just makes sense uh, we don't mind hurting the energy got no problem hurting the energy because we got nourish in here as well so we will be fine um, and I also go and have um, a primer. Now you can go ahead and run Equilibrium as well if you really want to. Um, it still will go and synergize, but for the most part, I'm really only really using these two abilities in this setup. Now I can use this because like I just said, I can go ahead and generate, if you remember when I was talking about the abilities, I can go ahead and generate energy orbs. So if you're in a bad spot and you're like, okay, well, you don't have an energized, you're not running Xenuric, yeah, you're not running Equilibrium, what's going on? If you can, try and just expend a molecular prime to speed them up, even in steel path, you're still, you should still be okay as long as you got this up. Then what you go ahead and do, try and just kill them and they should drop enough. If, I mean, I did like solo steel path survival inside Lua Conjunction Survival. And I did this, I think twice. That's all I need to do in 60 minutes. And it just helped my economy so much better. Cause as soon as I kill them with this, they're, there's a 50% chance they're all dropping uh, energy orbs. And again, Nourish is then multiplying that. So we're, we're getting a good amount of energy return. So the more enemies that get affected by this, the better that there is for a chance of you getting an energy orb. And then there's a... Get the idea? Okay. <laughs> anyways, anyways, you're yapping, Clark. Right. 
So a few other things going to talk about range because we want as much range as possible. Uh, augmented because we're just scaling on kills. We're going to get more and more ability strength. So over time, this is fantastic. If you're doing a bit of a shorter mission, I would take this out. Uh, but if you're doing endurance or scaler missions, so forth, keep this in. Uh, molecular fission. Now, like I said, this can also prime them. This is also genuinely quite important because without me even having to press this, I'm also getting the same effects basically which is huge it's genuinely huge you can feel the difference if you don't run it which is go test it yourself you'll see what i mean um that vulnerability is massive it plays a huge huge part here okay now prime shot footed is just survivability it's quality of life if you don't want it don't take it whatever all right but anyways i just don't want to go and get knocked down now arcane arachne does go ahead and work here so some people keep going ahead and recommend it to me and they say yo what about vigorous swap okay sure vigorous swap does also work for anybody who doesn't know that's this mod right here on equip, whenever you go and change weapons, you're going to get 165% damage for three seconds. Or, 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 hear me out, or get it for 30 seconds, but 15% less. I don't want to have to keep switching weapons every three seconds. I just keep, like, holstering and holstering and holstering. I'd rather take that. So, without further ado, this is kind of how it looks like here inside the Simulacrum. Um, we'll go ahead and use these corrupted enemies right here. And then um, we'll go ahead and get some gameplay up as well whilst I just yap a little bit. Um, yeah, this is all fine. Right, so this is how it would look. Ideally, you could go ahead and get the wall latch if you want to. Off you go. Then all you need to go and do is pop this and then go and pop this. And then go and pop it again. Look at that. And then go and pop it again. You see? And then go and pop it again. And then go and pop it again. And guess what you're going to do next? You're gonna pop it again i bet you couldn't guess what i'm gonna do next i'm gonna pop it again <laughs> okay so hopefully this little this point here i'll give it a little bit of a, a review um and i'll put some gameplay on the screen so um this build is absolutely crazy now this is a build that a lot of people are currently using um to go ahead and just do a whole bunch of steel path content it's absolutely effortless now it's one thing again that nova was really good defensively and utility it's another thing that now her offensiveness is in such a great spot i think like in the past all we would go ahead to do is do a little bit of armor strip with molecular prime and then use like devour and attrition with an incarnate weapon nowadays you don't need to go and do that because that's all patched anyways um so you can go ahead and just basically use this which is just so so effortless give this build a try before any of the others and i guarantee you you will fall in love with just how effortless this build is yes effortless take a shot every time i say the word effortless it is the key word it is fantastic all right as you can go ahead and see uh during this gameplay now i am gonna have to go ahead and bring you guys back because we do also have some more builds to go ahead and talk about so that's that build now i do have a second build here um actually i guess i'll go and come back to this i'll come back to this one in a moment um let's go and talk about the anti-matter build and how this one works and what's going on and i got a little bit of gameplay as well that you can see in a moment so antimatter um for this build what i want to go ahead and do is i'm basically going to be cycling around this now again it is for line of sight ideally uh, it can still work as i still path still path missions that's great i think at a particular threshold it might go and fall off i've been told that some people are using it um in uh eda rooms elite deep uh arc media rooms and they were clearing rooms in there so no it, it seems to do a very good job and that's like level 300s right 300s like necromex slash murmurs and whatnot so if it's doing a good job there it's gonna do a good job inside steel path right so for this build just gonna keep this short and sweet we're going to start things off with a little bit of uh, economy because I am going to be using quite a few different things here. Okay, so I'm going to go and do my typical hybrids of Brief Respite, Blind Rage, Equilibrium, Prime Flow and Arcane Energize. You'll see me go ahead and trifecta. It's not even a trifecta, but you'll see me trifecta this a lot in a lot of my builds. This, the quality of life that it then gives when you go and have, run a companion that is primer in, that has like synth deconstruct, so enemies injured go ahead and take 25%. You use um, a manifold full bond arc, arc coil duplex bonds and then you're going to run like a aoe hitting uh weapon like the micro missiles from this and then you're going to just put a primer build on this like viral heat stuff like that so forth more importantly viral okay so when i go ahead and put, put that on and then i go and use this kind of cross section here yeah those four mods especially with an arcane energize synergize so so well now i won't lie arcane energize might be overkill i'm not 100 sure i need to kind of like redo the build just a little bit more because I didn't have as much time to test this build but once again i could do an hour solo still past survival lua 
a conjunction it wasn't a problem we're getting to like almost level 300s and I'm, I'm still i think it was like two something and and we're still just killing them without an issue so it's still a very nice build you can still go and use it lovely jubbly as for the rest of the build uh, strength and range because go figure we want more damage absorption on this and we want more range on it. it's going to affect more enemies but keep in mind line of sight is an important factor here so um you do want a little bit open tile sets and if you want open tile sets then keep in mind you are going to want protection so keep your null star up as you can see i've just got about the maximum amount of particles on that you could always run like a molt efficiency if you wanted to as well nothing wrong with that again quality of life you don't have to go and run it it's entirely up to you i just don't want to go be knocked down molecular fission because i will go ahead and prime out uh, in this as well whenever i can um i just get extra damage towards it and i'm also using the rhino raw now the rhino raw um i believe actually does a double factor here so one not only does it increase the overall ability damage so antimatter is going to do more with rhino raw applied but because it also does a blast proc uh, i believe that also gets increased as well because it's still it's not a dot but it's considered a proc damage damage proc if you will so i believe that also gets increased don't get me wrong i barely ever see that blast proc because most things normally die to the initial hit which shows you how strong the build is so the second factor of it is just a nice quality of life to go and have as extra damage but i don't really go and see it that often um so yeah i'll go and put some gameplay up on this oh no sorry actually before i do that i'll show you the loader that i was using for this as well so then i went ahead and i used this is what i did go and use i've already explained this a little bit earlier in the video but this is the weapon that i go ahead and use for it i'm using the exegus okay do remember it's mostly just the damage mod so if you have a ribbon that also has just like you've rolled it and it says plus damage that's also going to help all right you're just looking for basic damage 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 whenever and wherever you can get damage get damage all right um so go ahead and whack that on i was also using the grimoire and what i was using it for was a little bit of extra strength just going to apply more or you can go a little bit of duration for some quality of life as well um with these invocation mods you don't have to you definitely don't have to but uh, i'm not gonna lie it definitely made the build just a little bit more fun but it adds an extra rotation whether or not you like the rotation so uh yeah again uh, the gameplay should be up on the screen so as you guys see it's uh it, it is good now it, it's kind of weird as well because as i was using it um there was a acolyte and if you use it purely and solely against just an acolyte it didn't do a tremendous amount of damage but if an acolyte was grouped with other enemies we were able to one shot the acolyte with blast procs that were essentially spreading and ticking which was phenomenal highly recommended so um yeah this build is a little bit <laughs> it's a little bit interesting i think i would prefer the null star builds but this is definitely one that i would recommend that you guys go and give a shot because it's still an interesting concept and then some play style obviously it's just whether or not you like the line of sight checks i know some people really really don't like that looking at you dante enough but for the most part um you guys should just be fine as well okay so let's go and bring myself uh, back again. Hi, there you go. And I've just got one more quick build to go ahead and walk through. And then I'm going to talk through these shards in a second as well. Um, don't worry, I haven't left the shards out. Then we've got Molecular. Now, the Molecular build, I just want you guys to all go and hear this. I don't need to teach you what this build is. This is Nova pre-rework Nova that still works post-rework Nova. Does that make sense? This build is here to do Molecular things. I am either looking to slow down enemies in interception missions or maybe potentially sometimes uh, i can't remember if it works on the disruptor i believe that it does a disruption mission or i'm looking to speed enemies up in defense missions that is bit this is my support builds I, I don't really have gameplay footage for you just press four okay <laughs> press four and dictate do you want them speed sped up or slow down now the good thing about this is i do have dispensary I've, the good thing about this is that it will go and scale for my survival i've even put rolling garden here so if i do want to go ahead and scale it with a slow nova build i can do you can go ahead and hybrid the like of this build with the null star if you wanted to and kind of like two factor it but for the most part this is purely just a support build so if you're looking to support nova it covers everything you've got energy not for yourself but also for your team way too much energy by the way i'm not even joking because with her passive plus dispensary brother everything's dropping energy um then you've got survivability with your shield gate in uh and then you've got even more survivability with your blessing as well in case it's like toxin procs because again good thing is i'm covering like every faction and every mission if i can well not every mission but you know what i mean 
Uh, and then it's just basically duration with make sure you go and cap the strength out at 150, I think it is, yeah, for the 75% slow or speed. That is simply it. There's not much else for me to go and teach you on that one. That is the builds. Now, this might look different on yours because you see, I've only got a 20% one in here. So let me go and talk about something real quick. I've also got these shards. Now, I will go and tell you what I have these shards for. Ideally, it depends on the build that you're going for. So between one of these three builds, you pick which one was more enjoyable for you. Right. Now that you've done that, this is what I would do for each build. If you're going for a null star build, barely, barely even need one casting speed. Barely. You can just do like a Tal Forge casting speed if you want to for quality of life. From there onwards, I would go damage. Just ability strength on all four shards. So I do one amber and then four over here. Now, what you could go ahead and do as well is because she's also killing with blasts, she's actually killing with blasts, you could also go and get some survival back with Topaz shards. Keep that in mind. Topaz shards as well, right? Those would also work really, really well because they can give you health and they can give you shield returns. It's good. Consider Topaz shards for blast, all right? That's what I would do if I was going for that build. If I'm going for this build, which is normally my most generated and most played builds, this is kind of what I'm going for, but ideally I would replace this with duration. So the casting speed is for the molecular right because i just i just want to get them out i just want to go and get them done whatever i probably still don't need to i can just take one so i can go and take this one out again and then from there onwards a bit more duration is nice just go and keep it lengthy and keep it spreading further and further some tile sets good you want a further spread other tile sets bad it's wasted because the tile set's too small and you're just pushing it off the map and it's doing nothing all right so it really just depends flex it how you want to for that one and when it comes towards the antimatter one um this is the one where i kind of want two different things here i barely just barely scraped enough for the antimatter particles i wouldn't mind an extra duration shard here i think that would go pretty well um if not i still think again one tail forge cast in speeds i think honestly one tail forge cast speed for majority of warframes is enough okay it's just a 30 37.5 percent casting speed it's so so good all right from there onwards it's mostly tldr it's mostly ability strength if you want more damage ability duration so crimsons is the same with that ability strength ability duration you flex and then topaz shards for blast okay that's basically how it goes um so as you can see i've currently got this set up but I would probably change it for a couple of blasts. I'm going to go and drop that. I'll probably go and drop that, put the Tal Forge in there. I'll probably go and maybe take a little bit of duration. And then I might go and do some blast here. Is what I might go and do. Two blasts, two duration, and then that. And then I'd have to go and change this build here because obviously I've, I would have lower and less strength. Okay. Anyways, that should basically be about it. Um, yeah, Nova's rework was absolutely insane. Uh, they've cooked here. Well done, DE. Very, very happy about that. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video as well, and I hope you guys enjoyed today's format. Um, hopefully, you saw a little bit of everything. You saw the builds, you had the rework, and you see some gameplay as well. So, um, yeah, best of luck out there. Do go ahead and enjoy it. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Like, share, subscribe, whatever you guys can go and do to support me at what I'm doing as well. I really enjoy these, so I hope you guys enjoyed them too. Thank you guys for watching today's video. I'll see you guys again in the next video. <laughs>